Welcome back to Free Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. CNN's Jake Tapper asked Senator Tom Cotton to defend remarks by former President Donald Trump encouraging Jewish Americans to vote for him or else. Let's watch. Any Jewish person that votes for her, especially now, her or the Democrat Party, should have their head examined. If I don't win this election, and I've been very good, you know, they say Trump's been right about everything. In my opinion, the Jewish people would have a lot to do with a loss. Are you comfortable with that? With Donald Trump saying if he loses preemptively, it's the fault of the Jews, a group already experiencing a rise of anti-Semitism in this country from the left and the right, but still uh, preemptively, it's the fault of the Jews? Well, Jake, Donald Trump has been saying things like this for at least 11 months since the October 7th attacks. I think the only reason the Democrats latched onto it this week is they see the polling that reflects Donald Trump winning record high amounts of Jewish voters for Republicans. The point he's been making all along is that any Jewish voter, Christian voter, any other kind of voter who cares about Israel, who cares about a relationship with Israel, should not vote for Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. Yeah, I, I don't think that it was as scandalous, I guess, the way Donald Trump put it, as Jake Tapper seemed to think. I definitely would have phrased it differently to make it sound not sound like there's some collective ethnic guilt if Trump loses, that it's Jewish people's fault. Um, I also, you know, I, I, I don't think that it's interesting what the Democratic Party is going through with, uh, with Jewish voters versus uh, Arab Americans and getting the Israel-Gaza policy right in a way that keeps the coalition happy, which seems utterly just impossible for the Democrats because they actually can't make any activists on these issues happy, right? The pro-Israel people are mad at them, don't think they're pro-Israel enough. The anti-Israel people are furious with them, extremely furious. Meanwhile, I don't actually think that, I, I'm not convinced that Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and Donald Trump are three people who would have markedly different approaches to Israel. Uh, if that's wrong, I'd be happy to be corrected, but Donald Trump certainly hasn't explained to me what the difference would be between his administration and what has gone on with respect to Israel in the last, or since October Yeah, 7th, I think that's right? I think that's fair. I mean, he's criticized Netanyahu. He has told Israel to quote unquote, wrap it up. Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? We would all like it wrapped like, up think, because yeah. it's not good and it costs American taxpayers money and, and, it's, and it's terrible what's happening. And I don't think it's making us safer, but they got attacked by terrorists. So I don't know, what do you do? Yeah, I mean, I guess he has a similar posture to the Ukraine-Russia war as he does to Israel-Hamas, I think. Um, but I agree that Jake Tapper really sensationalized what he said, and he tried to make it into this sort of like victimization narrative. Like he's clearly trying to frame it the same way as when anti-Semites say, you know, like Jews control the media and they're to blame for everything bad that's been happening in society. Like that's the angle that he was going for. I don't think that's at all what Trump was getting at. And he does talk this way about various voter blocks, whether it's evangelicals. He's been doing it recently with Catholics. He just launched a Catholics for Trump coalition. Um, I think the difference with Jewish voters is that there's an assumption that they're all pro-Israel, which is not always borne out by how they actually vote or how they work in activist groups. We have seen some Jewish people with the pro-Palestinian activists, for example, mm -hmm. whereas when you're talking to like religious groups, Catholics, based on you know their theological underpinnings and the words of the church, are supposed to be anti-abortion. So you can sort of pigeonhole them a little bit more easily because they have these specific tenets right. that they're supposed to follow, whereas an ethnic group might not. Um, but Trump said something similar, I think, in the 2016 election about black voters, which was what the hell do you have to lose? You've been voting Democrat all this time. They haven't been helping you. That's the same thing I, I see him getting yeah. at here with Jewish voters, yeah. is that the Democrats have basically abandoned your home country if you have some you know allegiance to israel or feel like israel is doing the right thing in this war and i will be a better president in terms of making sure that those interests are protected well you're right about it not being a monolith because i mean there are jewish people who are very supportive of israel mm -hmm. and but are nevertheless dissatisfied with right. what the government has done i mean there are in fact very hardline people people who support um some aspect or maybe all aspects of the military campaign in Gaza, but still don't like Netanyahu for, for presiding over a horrific uh, 
failure of their own, the country's security, for his strategy with respect to Hamas, which there's been much credible mainstream reporting on how uh, Hamas got some implicit or tacit support from Netanyahu in a way of having the opposition be so delegitimizing that it would be difficult for uh, the Palestinians to advocate for their own uh, statehood. Uh, policies that seem to have not been a good idea for Israel's own security. And so it's a very, you know, it's a very difficult um, situation. Obviously, the you know, the pro-Palestinian advocacy that's been taking place on college campuses, I think, has been a major headache for Biden and now Kamala Harris because there's so much dissatisfaction with Joe Biden from that corner. Um, and I, I share those sentiments to a degree. I obviously don't support the, 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 include the sentiments that are like Jewish people should be excluded from our campuses and we agree with what Hamas did, which is a significant, it's not a trivial, it's, exactly. part of, it's part of the protest that took place on campus. They have the right to do that. I absolutely support their free speech. They don't have the right to take over areas of the campus and not let other people uh, through. But it's clearly been a difficult needle for Democrats to thread and Kamala Harris's ascendancy um, muted the criticism slightly out, again, out of this totally made up perception that she is at all different on this issue. There's no evidence she's different from, from Joe Biden on this issue. And if Trump is different, I don't know how because he hasn't explained it. I just feel like if you're a progressive who came out in support of Kamala Harris because she wasn't Joe Biden, you must feel pretty cucked right now. <laughs> because, and sorry. No, she sold you out on every single, I mean, yeah. they, they, made, they made up this fantasy that she was going to be more pro-Palestine. She has said explicitly that she will continue Not. the Biden administration's policy on Israel. She has flipped on every progressive issue that she supported in 2019. Like, what are you getting out of this? And I was saying months ago when uh, when the Democratic Party was trying to win over these pro-Palestinian activists who were voting undecided or uncommitted in some of the Democratic primaries, that they better be very careful because it could cost them Jewish voters, which have been a reliable Democratic voting bloc. And Tom Cotton is right on the fact that the polls for Trump among Jewish voters look much more favorable than they have in the past two election mm -hmm. cycles. And I have to think that's because of the tacit support for that wing of the party, even if the policy doesn't reflect it. If you hear their rhetoric, you're going to be concerned that at some point, possibly the administration could flip. They've been kind of confusing on their policy towards Israel because they've, of course, continued to supply them with tons of American taxpayer right. dollars and weaponry, and they've been- The uh, least popular aspect of our foreign policy, and the bipartisan is all right. for it, right? That's the one area where I wish she was, would hold the line on being, you know, quote unquote progressive, but it's not even, it's progressive or just anti- Anti-interventionist, Interventionist, yeah. being a little bit more skeptical of where and whether American tax dollars are being uh, spent overseas and whether that's in our best interest and whether that should just go on forever is something I wish both Democrats and Republicans, I wish those were questions they were more likely to ask, but that's where you get the most bipartisanship is on your tax dollars being shipped overseas for some ostensible national security purpose right. that never seems to serve our interests very well. Right, so they've been doing that and then they have John Kirby who's been sharing a lot of the press briefings with Karine Jean-Pierre being very vocally pro-Israel, but then they go into these negotiations for a ceasefire and the hostages somehow fall off the map. And then there was an incident where um, they had presented a ceasefire proposal to Hamas that Israel was not privy to and had no idea was even being negotiated. And then Hamas comes out publicly and says that they're in favor of it, putting Israel in this very horrible position because it's like, oh, well, the United States and Hamas are now allied against right. us with the ceasefire proposal. So there's just so many dissonant things that the Biden administration has been doing, where if this were an issue that really mattered to me on either side, I would be hands off because I don't really yeah. know where they stand and what they truly believe. Well, right, I, I know where, I think I know where they stand, but they're just unwilling to stand by what they stand for. Like, they'll take the position that we're not comfortable, and I understand why, with everything Israel is doing, that it has crossed some red lines. We've said this is not, this is not, you shouldn't do this, and they've done it anyway. And past administrations, including Republican administrations, have said up to a point, okay, this is now getting at the risk of like World War III, no more of this if you want to continue to benefit from our support. And this Netanyahu maybe is a different political actor and has just said, no, I'm going to keep doing whatever I'm doing. And we will say, the Biden administration will say we don't like it, but then there's no consequence. Right. And, and uh, you, you 
do have to be willing, I guess, to withdraw aid if you're going to say we don't want, we're not, not going to support you anymore. I mean, we still support your right to exist and your right to confront and fight a terrorist organization, but maybe at some point that's your business and not ours. Uh, we don't want to be on the hook for everything they're doing because sometimes Americans come under attack by terrorist organizations because we're linked to this policy that our administration says they don't even agree with, but is paying for. And that's why that's the incoherence. Yeah, and that's why, regardless of what you think about Netanyahu, his posture on this is correct because he because he can get whatever he wants he, without yeah, Biden and do, yeah, he just keeps getting away with it. So yeah. it's like, why would he change his behavior if the U.S. has repeatedly demonstrated that they're not willing to actually? change policy to make it more difficult for him to do those things, he, all he has to deal with right now is like mean words. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, he, that does is not holding him at bay whatsoever. More free media right after this.